open. Kitchen's open. Welcome to Poetry Kitchen Live. Today we're talking about how you can polish your Thanksgiving. Yeah. We have three dishes planned and we're excited. Yeah. So let's get started. Tell us in comments below where you're streaming, not streaming, where you're coming from. And if you have a lot of snow like we do. Yeah, we got a couple inches. That's pretty good. Eh? Poland got covered. Yeah, we did good. So let's cook together. Let's go. Uh, sounds like some new kind of music should play now. Do, 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 do music. I'm going to do some admin stuff uh, while people are coming in. And I'm going to start from the top and say that today's video is sponsored by our friends at Bachik.com. And our daughter who is sitting right behind there is going to post a link to their website. They're a wonderful Polish food uh, producer. They ship their products from Poland to America. And we're going to be using some of the products today because we're using real Polish um, cabbage and fermented cabbage and pickle, well, not pickles, we're not, we can eat our pickles today, I guess, but we're not cooking with pickles. And mushrooms, uh, wild Polish mushrooms. So we're excited that they're with us <clears throat> and they're sponsor of ours because we like them so much, not because... Not we're not using their products because they're sponsor, but we're using their products they, because, they, because we love them so much. Right, and, and <clears throat> that's how it all started. Well, we used them back in Philly when we lived in Philly. We that's sure when we did. found them. Yeah. We sure did, and that's why we got in touch with them and we said we love you. Can you come with us? And they said yes. We they said if they give me mustard, we'll do a advertising <laughs> yeah. for them. Uh, and also, right in the front, I want to say that uh, we have a new product in our in our store. Uh, beautiful. I'm calling it a gift box from Poland, and it's uh, uh, the latest book, Post Your Kitchen, My Family Table, a signed copy, a copy of the, I should be really holding this, of my Christmas cookbook, also signed, where I talk about Christmas traditions uh, in my home. You're going to get a Polish chocolate, a premium chocolate, and a Christmas card with our sticker. Um, signed by Mark and I and you can't read the wishes yet until no no you can't read the wishes <laughs> so if you'd like to get one of those you can go to our, our website posturekitchen.com and up at the top at the bookstore you go to our bookstore and you can choose whatever you'd like and again we're cooking for my book today partially but all the recipes are also available at posturekitchen.com so you don't have to buy the book if you don't want to and if you're cooking along I'm gonna try to go slow so you can have time to uh, keep keep cooking along with me and uh, if you're watching this uh, not live in the description of the video I posted how to prepare for the cook along so you can cook right along with me I'm gonna drop a link to the gift box Hannah's gonna drop a link to the gift box Hannah say hi to Clayton hi Clayton <laughs> uh, this is a family business um, if you're new here, Mark and I run the show, uh, run the business together, and ha our daughter Hannah helps us sometimes when she has time, or when she wants to, I guess, too. Let's get cooking, woman. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, so we're making three dishes today, and I chose these three dishes for your upcoming Thanksgiving. America is uh, celebrating Thanksgiving on Thursday, and I thought it'd be nice to have something that you can... Uh, bring to the table that's not strictly American and that would kind of help you carry your Polish traditions along with your American heritage. So I chose three dishes and we're going to start with kapusta z grzybami which means cabbage and mushrooms uh, and this is a mixture of fresh and um, uh, sauerkraut and fermented cabbage which we're going to start with because this one has to cook the longest. But you will see that you can pretty much within the time we're here, about an hour and a half, I'm, I'm guessing, you can have three dishes ready in, for your Thanksgiving dinner. And probably make it ahead of time as well. So I'm going to start with, uh, I've started slicing the cabbage, but I think you're going to have to kind of come over this way. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to start also sauteing my onions. And if you haven't done that yet, um, you can do that too. So we have an onion over here on the side. And I hope your kitchen is just as trashed as mine. <laughs> Close that blind. Okay. Yeah, because it keeps on, the light keeps on going in there. So I have the onion sliced in here. And I'm going to put 
and turn your pan on, let it start heating, not on super high. I'm gonna put some butter in it, and I have it on seven. I'm gonna put the onions in here and let them saute a little bit. And as soon as I'm gonna put this away so I don't start crying. <laughs> and to our mushroom or to our onions shortly, we're gonna have to add uh, mushrooms. And I have wild mushrooms that have been soaking. Uh, they're just resting waiting here. And I have button mushrooms. And if you haven't done this yet, if you have to cut these up, I like to do this. Oh. Michael yes, says, bless you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to shred these. If you haven't cut yours up, you can do that too. Or I'm pretty sure, I think I said to prepare them. Uh, but while I'm shredding, you can maybe ask questions or tell me where you're from. Oh, Mary Jane Pals from Buffalo. Oh, I hope you guys are okay. <laughs> uh, we've been watching the news over here and you guys got a good six footer up there i think and I, holy cow uh my heart goes out to you yeah i love snow but holy I crap i love snow but <laughs> the, i mean how are you dealing with snow tell us in comments if you can we've also got some pennsylvanians some massachusetts 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 how do you say massachusetts <laughs> massachusetts Citizens of Massachusetts. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, maybe I can talk about this dish a little bit. So, the cabbage and mushrooms, kapusta z grzybami, is traditionally prepared for Christmas uh, in Poland, as uh, Poles normally follow uh, no meat rule on Christmas Eve. Uh, so, this kind of fit right in. There's many, many uh, cabbage dishes in, in Polish cooking, and cabbage and mushrooms. <coughs> It is the one that kind of always is present at Christmas. But I kind of found it interesting that when we lived in America that <clears throat> there is just one, uh, one uh, expression to describe Polish cabbage dish. And people just say kapusta, which means just means cabbage. But there is not really this distinction between the dishes. And we have so many cabbage dishes that if I, someone asks me, how do you make your kapusta? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Which one? In many, many ways. So this kapusta, this cabbage, is normally a Christmas dish. But I think it will do really, really well during your Thanksgiving meal. Because it's so easy to make and you can make it ahead of time. And it's just full of flavor and I think it will just go great with it. Kathy says don't cut your fingers now. I'm going to try not to. We also did a video on like, what was it, 11 we did, dishes? Yeah, we did a video on 15, uh, 15. Yeah, 10, 15 dishes 11, that we uh, suggested. Uh, maybe Hannah can find it yeah. on YouTube, on our channel on YouTube. Whoa! How to <clears throat> Polish your Thanksgiving. Hello, Vienna, Austria. So, so far we've had California check in. Cool. We've had Canada check in. And now Vienna, Austria. That's so cool. Hi, guys. I'm going to turn my onions down a little bit so they don't burn on me. Oh, um, Hamburg, Germany, too. Oh, cool. hi, Hamburg. Welcome. Or to maybe Germany. Hamburg, New York. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so Hannah's going to post a, uh, a link in the messages, too. So we have a couple of giveaways today. I forgot. See, I was doing admin stuff at the front, stuff at the front, and I forgot about this. Because you're rushing me to get to cooking. Are you hungry? Yes, I am. <laughs> Clayton was uh, talking about having a beer with me tonight. I'm drinking a local here. It's a Chechen beer, uh, but it's non-alcoholic because I have to pay attention. <laughs> Uh, so we have a couple of giveaways today. Um, our sponsor Bachik is gonna send one uh, gift basket to one lucky person, and we're also gonna give away one of our Christmas boxes. So I hope you stay till the end, and you are the lucky winner. Me too. <laughs> All right, I'm almost done with the mushrooms. 
And then we'll cut the cabbage, which is just as fun. The cabbage is cut really, really thin, too. It is. I mean, for, for a trained ape like me, it's difficult. <laughs> but if you have some knife skills, it's... It, I prefer it to... I prefer to cut it uh, small like that because it cooks a little bit more evenly and it looks prettier. So uh, do you suggest a mandolin ever for that? For the cabbage? Yeah. Absolutely. Just be careful with that yeah. thing. So I'm um, over here now. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sh I'm coming. You want to be showing my back. That's okay. I'm a professional. I'm going to add a little bit more butter. And my onions are starting to uh, become translucent. And this is okay. I'm going to add... I'm going to just dump the whole thing in there. We'll edit it out. No. Unfortunately. Okay. And these will just... I'm going to give them a pinch of salt. So they start sweating a little bit. Thank you, Dorothy. I am just making a big mess. <laughs> this is kind of cool because when you do the videos, we just edit out all this stuff, yep. so they can see how it really goes. You can we, you can now see live how ridiculous we get <laughs> in the kitchen. All right, so let this this can continue to slowly cook, and I hope you're not in a rush and you can hang out with us through um, through the video. And you are cooking along. Please let us know what you're cooking along. There have been quite a few people have mentioned they are cooking today. Awesome. Yeah. So to the shredder, shredder, you can definitely use a mandolin and it's actually probably even better. But I slice my cabbage quite thin and then after it goes this way, I also will turn it and cut it like this. And again, quite small. It just looks so much more appetizing and those big chunks. I'm showing. Um, this is kind of a vegetarian version of Vigos. If you know a little bit more about Polish co cooking, you may know a dish called Vigos, which is cabbage cooked with a bunch of different meats and sausage and bacon and um, sometimes beef. And ketchup. You can do venison, <laughs> ketchup, or some kind of tomato product, and put plums in it. I do have a recipe for it as well on my page. Check it out. So let's see the and you, how fine. And this even is. these bigger pieces, I kind of like to run my knife through them to make it a little bit smaller. And I do have a pot for it back here. So I'm just going to put it, put it in here for right now. Now we're using cast iron. Does, do you recommend cast iron? Can any old pot do? Any pot will do. I like to use cast iron because it holds the heat in nicely and this has to kind of stew for a little while. So. Now are you doing that whole head? I'm going to do half. Uh-huh. Half, half, half of a head. Yep. And this is a beast. Like this is, this is the other half of this thing, guys. That was not a small, it's like a volleyball it's size. Another one. <laughs> Somebody said, yeah, they're usually two fingers short on a mandolin after they use it. <laughs> I, I was using a mandolin a couple weeks ago, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself as I'm shredding, and I'm like, careful, Mark, careful, Mark, careful, Mark, until, yep, took the tip of my finger off. Any questions coming in? You guys got questions? No, they're mostly... They're cooking. They're, 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 cooking. they're, they're cooking. They're too busy to type. You don't have time to type your uh, <laughs> questions. <laughs> Dorothy says she completely destroyed her kitchen in the last cook-along. <laughs> it makes it look so easy. <laughs> oh no, our kitchen is destroyed too. I have a mandolin here. Oh, we have a couple. Let's see. See if I can oh, here we go, oh, folks. Let's see if we're gonna go. Know. This is a good idea. Can I get the band aids ready? <laughs> oh, geez. Now, if you have never used a mandolin before, this thing right here is basically a razor blade. And um, 
it makes it come out nice and go ahead, nice and smooth. But it'll also take the tip of your finger off. Yeah, well. <laughs> when I was little, when I was little, we had this huge, um, uh, I guess I can call it a mandolin shredder that would go on top of our bathtub with like a square box over the blade. It would slide over the blade, put a whole cabbage in there, and slice uh, cabbage for this is this thing is moving around. <laughs> Well, we have, we bought one of those massive mandolins, and guys, sometimes we'll show you, uh, like, it's honestly like three feet long. It's a huge wooden mandolin. Yeah. Now, somebody was asking about the mushrooms and how small you chop them. Okay. She put them through a grater, and if you can see the size we got going on over here, they're very, very tiny. They don't have to be that small. It's just easier to cut that amount of mushrooms by shredding. So that's why I do it. I, sh I, I also shred mushrooms like that for uh, pierogi filling with mushrooms. What do you think about a food processor? Sure, yeah, absolutely. How many cups of cabbage you reckon? I'm gonna say probably... Because the measurement four. is like a half a head. Yeah, about but what do you four reckon or you five. Get? About four or five yeah. cups? Healthy cups. Yeah, and it's really not that important because it will, whatever you do, it'll come out. And if you make it and you decide that you want to have more mushrooms, you can just do that. And next time you'll know. <laughs> so you'll get, you'll get used to doing it and kind of deciding on your measurements. And my, my recipes, I keep saying that, are not to be followed. <laughs> they're, they're just a guideline. There's another question. What would be a great dessert to make for a Polish-style Thanksgiving? Oh, I would do apple cake. And I say apple cake a lot. For everything. For, but um, because it's so easy, because there's so much on, on your plate already. So apple cake, you can make the day ahead and you're like, you don't have to worry. I'm going to need some water. I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> Well, go ahead. I'll follow you around. <laughs> oh, we need to fill that thing, don't we? Yeah. This will only take a half hour. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add this to my cabbage. Somebody was asking if we're going to do pierogi at the Christmas what, live cooking. Mm -hmm. If we're making pierogi? Yeah. I feel we should. Well, then we will. There's so the answer. I'm going to come over to here now and we'll start this cabbage. We need to have it soften a little bit and we'll add a little bit of salt and just follow the recipe. How much salt you reckon you just uh, put in there? Not with? very much because... How much is not very uh, much? Probably half a teaspoon. Okay. Uh, because I don't want to over salt it. There's going to be a lot of flavors coming from... Um, you know, these were salted already, our cabbage has some salt, our sauerkraut has some salt in it as well, so you can always add salt. So I started this on almost on high, just to keep, uh, bring it to uh, temperature, and I have the trio that I call trio, uh, bay leaves, peppercorns, and allspice. Okay. So I'm going to pop those in here. As soon as these mushrooms cook. Now, does Batik have a solution for this if you don't feel like cooking at all? Oh, for like the. Oh, they actually they have like halfway solution. Yeah, hi. And this is, I believe, this is a new product. It's it says cabbage with or sauerkraut with mushrooms, kapusta spod grzybkiem. So you can, um, you don't have to buy mushrooms anymore. You can add some button mushrooms if you want to bring it up a little bit. But this you would put in your pan, you can add onions like we're doing here, and then saute a little bit or add more cabbage if you want, but you're halfway there already with this. This is a great product. And uh, mushrooms. I, I get asked about wild mushrooms a lot, and these are, they, these come from Poland as well. Keep moving. Keep moving. <laughs> Keep moving. <laughs> so you would, they come with packages like this, you can probably use a, a package for this dish. 
and um, we'll post a I mean you can search or maybe Hannah can find them on the website and post a link too so these I had I soaked these for uh, for a little while and then I boiled them and these are actually our mushrooms that we um, we picked a few weeks ago yeah we did didn't we mm -hmm. so we'll see if we live, live through this sorry okay. <laughs> So these will just get a chop. We got some, there's some interesting names of places. What was it Rocky Mountain House Canada? Is that what was just on there? Uh, or something like that? Rocky Mountain. Alberta. Rocky Mountain House, Alberta, Canada. That's cool. Can we, can we go there? Where are we? Uh, we picked these mushrooms in the forest next to a beautiful air, I mean, it was ridiculous. So we went to the Airbnb with our friends that used to be along a disused uh, railroad line and it was a railroad attendance house that has been remodeled and turned into Airbnb. It was gorgeous. Um, maybe we'll put some pictures up of that sometime. <sighs> but we had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, we, we found a lot of mushrooms. Yeah. It was near Mishli Bush. If you know, uh, if you know where Mishli Bush is just south of Stetching Everything is south from stretching because we're in a corner. <laughs> yeah. But almost straight south uh, towards Gorhof. Really nice area. Okay, so our cabbages are coming. I'm dropping a link to mushrooms from Bachik. Thank you. Dropping a link from mushrooms to the Bachiks. So these are cooking a little bit. And we want to get a little bit of color on these. And first we're going to sweat some of the moisture out. And then they're gonna start. <laughs> mushroom secrets are where the mushrooms are kept are secrets to those people who think they're secrets, but they're not secrets, they're in all the forests. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who says they're secrets? Well, somebody was saying that I thought it was a secret, you know, where the mushrooms are. You don't tell anybody, mm -hmm. so they don't go and take your mushrooms. But they're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. Somebody's asking what kind of appetizers you make for Christmas or for Thanksgiving, we don't do appetizers. We don't do appetizers because there's, there's so too much, much food yeah. that uh, we don't want to take up the room. <laughs> but probably same for Christmas. For Christmas, there's no, no appetizers, appetizers either. either. No, you starve until you see the first star. Yeah, you start. You have breakfast. Very. Uh, we we'll talk about Christmas during the Christmas live. Oh yeah, this is Thanksgiving. Stop, Stop it. it. <laughs> Somebody's asking about what Zurich concentrate is, and I believe that's concentrated Zurich. Mm hmm. So Zurich concentrate is, uh, so Zurich is soup made out of um, fermented flour, uh, and you can make it, or you can make the ferment, fermented starter, or you can buy it, which is in the bottle. Uh, it's called Zurich concentrate. So all you do is make a nice broth, uh, either vegetable or uh, like smoky bacon. I right hear. Uh, I hear um, bubbling over here, so I have to come over here and mix this. So you can make, make a nice broth for, with vegetables or with like sausage and pork, and then you would add your Zurich starter to it and make a soup. So I am kind of just steaming the cabbage a little bit for a few minutes. And I put a little bit of water on the bottom. And I can turn it down now. What are you turning it down to? Like I halfway? Half, about halfway. Medium yeah. heat? Mm -hmm. And just until it loses some of that biggest crunch. But we don't want it mushy either. So we'll give it a couple more minutes. Just enough time for our mushrooms. I think the water is almost all gone from these, so they're going to start browning nicely. Does Bachi have a Jura concentrate? I believe they do. Because okay. people are asking if they can buy it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I they do. See if, there's... if they do, it's worth... If you don't have time to make your own Jour, it is worth getting some. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very... Um, Specific soup. Yeah. 
and it may kind of taste weird at first. So if you do, you can even buy boxed vegetable broth and add uh, like piece of really good smoked bacon to the broth and add that flavor, that smoky flavor, and then use that jour concentrate and then kind of give it a taste and add a little bit more. Uh, what are you waving at? Moving me? along. No, I'm making this. Everybody oh, I time. thought we were going to do something else right now. We I apologize. Making cabbage. I'm sorry. Oh, I almost forgot. So I have water from soaking and boiling the mushrooms. And this is uh, an absolutely amazing flavor. We don't want to get rid of it. So I'm going to add it to my cabbage. That is not something that I will ever put down the drain. I would drink it before I put it down the drain. <laughs> Make mushroom tea. Can this cabbage dish be frozen? Uh, probably yes. Yeah, I would just make sure you get all the air out of the bag. Like yeah. I use this. Or you can can it too. Put it in a jar and boil it in a jar. And it doesn't have any meat in it, so you don't have to be so fussy about making sure to cook it, you know, three times or you can just can it once. And Cheers from Vancouver and Mary from Buffalo. Oh, stay warm, guys. Holy <laughs> cow. So how are your mushrooms doing, guys? Are you sweating them out? How are they doing? By where you are. Turn this up a little bit. Hannah and I woke up to snow oh, up? yesterday and... Uh, it was awesome. We were all dancing. Because <laughs> Stretchin doesn't get a lot of snow here. No, we, ha we hardly get snow in for Christmas, so this is really unusual. Yeah, yeah, I was beside myself. Holy cow, Mary Krakowski. I will address you as a Polish woman, Mary Krakowska. <laughs> she said she got four feet. The last time I saw that much snow, we were we had just moved from Hawaii. Um, yeah. When I was still in the service, we moved from Hawaii to Pennsylvania, to Valley Forge. The day after we got there, we had no winter gear really. We got three feet of snow, so we had shorts and three feet of snow. <laughs> I remember that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The water's almost all gone from my mushrooms, so I'm gonna also add these to my pan. So these are the wild mushrooms the wild going mushrooms. into the yeah. button mushrooms. And two, if you don't like wild mushrooms, you don't want to add them, you don't want to buy them, whatever, you can't go mushroom pick picking. You can just skip, skip the mushrooms too, or the wild part, and just go with the portobellas. Uh, I like using those, uh, they have a little bit more flavor than the normal button mushrooms or whatever more wild mushrooms you can buy at your local grocery store. Sometimes there's a really nice variety. Somebody would like to know what your beverage of choice this evening is. Are you drinking compote? I am drinking tea. Oh, tea. Yeah. Fruit tea. But it kind of tastes like compote because it's like currant tea and, <laughs> and uh, raspberry tea. Mm -hmm. Raspberries, yes. Mm -hmm. So we are almost there, my friends. And in the meantime, I'm going to this cabbage is also. Can you give me a spoon, babe? Yes, ma'am. Camera might go off from here while I look. There you are. Let's give this a taste. Let's see if our cabbage is soft, softer. Don't burn yourself. And then these little uh, magic bubbles <laughs> when I put them in my in everything I cook and then I get asked asked a lot if I take them out and I never do no she doesn't it's fun <laughs> when people bite into them <laughs> can you hear me crunching yes so there's still a little bit of crunch in it but I kind of like it a little crunch so we're almost we're almost there on the cabin I'm going to give these a stir. These are getting nice and brown. 
this little color of it. And then I'm gonna take. I'm not gonna use the one with mushrooms because I already put it in and uh, put my mushrooms in it. So I have a variety of kapusta kishona and kishona's marhepko. Uh, what and, does that mean? Oh, sorry. Uh, with ca with carrots. Uh -huh. um, and when I make sour sauerkraut at home, I normally put carrots in mine too. But today I'm. You do or you don't? I do. Okay. <clears throat> but today I'm gonna use uh, just the straight kapusta. And oh, mm. huh. Whoa. Uh, and you always have to eat the first first uh, first bit. Uh-huh. Gotta, mm. gotta test it. If you mm. it's really good tapping. It is. If you don't make your own, this is next next best thing. And if you look at the ingredients. I haven't looked before today because I don't have to because I know it's just cabbage and water and salt. If you're buying cabbage locally, um, read the read the label and see if you don't need anything else other than cabbage, water, and salt in it. If there's anything else in it, it means that it's fake cabbage. Definitely no vinegar. Oh. Well, unless you like a vinegar cabbage. Right, but then <laughs> it's not it's not fermented cabbage then. No, it's not fermented you're right. All right, so this is good for me. I'm gonna turn the mushrooms and add them to my cupboard. I'm gonna give this a... And my kitchen is slowly becoming a disaster area too. Uh, Joy, would I like to ask, how long do these things last in the fridge, would you reckon, these um, dishes? If you make them today, they'll be okay till Thanksgiving. Um, I would take out the cabbage if you cook it if you're cooking along with us today and you want to keep it till Thanksgiving take it out again tomorrow and kind of heat it through make it bubbly and then it'll be fine and then maybe again on Wednesday I know that when we do Christmas over here the same pot of bigos sits on the stove for like three days and just yep. keeps on getting reheated and everything so I'm now turning it to three which my stove goes out to nine so kind of too low, set it too low, and I'm going to add, see how nice it got, nice and dark. Now I'm going to add, I have some, what is this? Tomato paste. Tomato paste. A couple, couple tablespoons or one tablespoon, whatever you have. You can add one and then decide if you want to add more later. Stir that in. Just for a little bit, a little bit of sweetness, not a whole lot. If you don't have tomato paste, a nice hefty squirt of ketchup will do as well. I was surprised at how prolific ketchup is uh, in Poland in producing things like bigos, and I think every well, single every. You're not supposed to put ketchup. Yeah, okay, well everybody we know here puts ketchup in it. Mmm, <laughs> that's nice and soft. Thank you, Sophie, you're very sweet. Ooh, what? that's really sweet. Can I have a fork, please? Yes, ma'am. So, I never rinse my cabbage because that's just goodness that you're putting down the drain and not in your body. So, I don't rinse it or drain it, I just... Maybe like to cut it a little bit. Though. <laughs> I just remembered. It's you're you're somebody to keep up with with this camera. Sorry. I'll tell you what. But this one was actually quite shredded, quite thinly. So I thought ketchup was just an American thing too, but it. I'm telling you, all of our friends and their families, I see them making bigos, and they all squirt ketchup in it. Every one of them. Look how packed it is in there. That is a lot. I'm just gonna do half, uh, half of this jar, which equals about one can. Gene is correct. Also, a lot of poles do put pe uh, ketchup on pizza. And it's disgusting. <laughs> they like to put ketchup on everything. It's like their ranch. So I'm just cutting one time through the, through it. So then when you're eating it, you don't have kind of long strings. You gotta keep up. 
I'm gonna make everybody throw up if I try to keep up with you. Nice and um, nicely packed in the jar. So you get a nice amount of habit out of it. Well, I'm gonna give it a last stir. Hanya, look in the recipe, see if I'm missing anything, please. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, not a bit Yeah. Not Stephen, this is a jar of sauerkraut. In Polish, they call it kapusta kishona. But it's sauerkraut. It smells really good. It smells like Christmas in here, doesn't it? Hanyo? Check it, shukum chupisu. I had no shot to go, yes. Kapusta chupisu, yes. cabbage. Peppercorns, salt, sauerkraut, but nothing. Masło? Yes. Cebola? Yes. Tomato paste? Yes. Dobra. So that is it, my friends. And turn it down to two, like, low. And we will just kind of keep an eye on it. Uh, we want a little bit of moisture in it. So I think I will add. Uh, you just keep your eye on the cabbage. I'm gonna keep my eye on the cabbage. How am I gonna keep my eye on the cabbage? So, hey, how's it going? <laughs> um, so we have some big events coming up. Big um, videos will be coming up soon. Oh, so you guys don't you know subscribe to the channel because <laughs> it's Christmas coming up, and they have these things called Christmas markets here in Europe. So if you can think of some Christmas markets. One comes to your head in Poland, which one would it be? Ooh, good question. Comment below. I want to see the answers to that. Comment below. Where do you think we should go to look at Christmas markets? Because we have a couple planned. We have um, some things coming up, so stay tuned. So if you, this is how much moisture I have in the pot. Okay. Well, that's Not a whole lot. Right? You see uh, it? First guess is Kraków, Wrocław. Kraków. Where? Who ever heard of Kraków or Wrocław? Kraków and Wrocław. Never heard of these places. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit more moisture to this. I have probably about a cup of water. You can add broth to a little bit shy of a cup, just so you can see, because this you can see a little bit more moisture, maybe even more. So about a cup. Zakopane. This will cook off. Never heard of the place. <laughs> Stop it! You're gonna make people <laughs> believe you. Um, since this is cooking a little bit, make sure there's moisture in it uh, so it doesn't burn. Uh, this happens to me all the time. You don't want it. You don't want that happening. I'm going to cover it. I have it on yes, three. Yeah. I'm going to put it on two. And let it go. Uh, this can sit for another, whatever, however much time you have. Somebody asked if you can add beer. Yes, you can. Good. I would go for lighter beer, though, so it doesn't, you know, if you have a can of Natty Light laying around. Nobody <laughs> wants that anyway. <laughs> okay, so we are, next we're gonna make kupitka. So I'm just gonna clear this. I don't like it if I drop it, but I don't want cabbage in my kupitka. And I chose to do, I have this for y'all. Oh, thank you, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> And I chose to do um, kopitka dyniowe, which means pumpkin uh, kopitka, because of the season. I think, you know, Thanksgiving is a really nice, uh, still time, but everybody likes to eat a lot of pumpkin, so we'll do those. And that recipe is not in my book, but it is on my website, so you can check it out there, um, which I'm sure you already have. So I have potatoes. Just, just plain old mashed taters. Plain old mashed taters. How many to mashed taters? Uh, however much you want. <laughs> no, come on. No, people hate that kind of answer. This is they come to you because grandma used to say that. Pound and a half. Pound and a half. Pound and a half. <laughs> pumpkin. So I roasted my own uh, because you can't you can't buy pumpkin in Poland. 
or pumpkin puree. Puree, yeah. So I bought a pumpkin yesterday and I roasted it and I then blended it. Mark blended it actually for me. Hania, ile jest w przepisie? Dzień jak w Dyni. Dyni, jeszcze lepiej. 425 gramów albo 15 ounces. So I'm gonna uh, accurately measure this. this much. How much? 15 ounces or 425 grams. So a can of... Can of a can, yeah. A can. And how long... It wasn't a very big pumpkin. It was no. probably the size of... It was less than, smaller than a volleyball. And how long mm -hmm. did you cut it, or how long did you uh, bake it for? I cut it in half, put the cut side, side. down, and I roasted at 360 uh, or 180 Fahrenheit for probably... No, reverse. 180 or 360 180 Fahrenheit. 180 Celsius, 360 Fahrenheit for probably close to 45 minutes. Okay. And then I scooped the inside, or the meat. And then I blended it with an immersion blender. So I'm gonna add an egg, and I'm all this is. I'm doing half the recipe that's on here. So uh, you do whatever you're doing, whatever you measured out. And there's an egg, and I'm glad I'm doing kapitka today, because I get this recipe may be may seem difficult. I'm gonna get a pinch of salt from behind here. Sorry, and I salted the potatoes too. So heavy pinch. Heavy pinch. Um, because in the monkey, three cups. So I'm gonna do one and a half. Three cups of flour. Three cups. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna do one and a half. One and a half because you're doing half. I'm doing yeah. half. Yeah. Because kopitka seem that they are difficult when you have never seen them being made, because the uh, they seem like they can get take up a lot of flour, but you, I think people try to knead them, and there's no knead. <laughs> so you, <laughs> so you scrambled the egg a little bit in there, just barely. Yeah, scrambled just to break the yolk. Just to break the yolk, and I'm just kind of folding the flour in. Let me get a little close up on this. Yeah, so because see. it's there's so mo so much moisture in it, in the potatoes and in the um, in the pumpkin. It seems like I need to keep adding flour because like this just won't clump. You are correct, Ada. It's half the recipe right now. What you're doing. And see how this is just kind of sticking together. You want that, but it will never make a dough like a pizza dough. Because this is just not that kind of, uh, like that's just not how it works. It's just not that it's kind just, of girl. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not that kind of guy or girl. So, I'm going to keep, and get a little more flour, and just kind of now form it. I'm not kneading it, I'm just going to try to form it into the law into a log. Just, just like try to mix the pumpkin in a little bit. Oh, our doggy. So it combines with the potatoes, but we're not kneading it. And then we're just gonna form it. And what we're forming it into is a little log like this. And just put some flowers into your hand so you're not sticking. And then we're gonna log, we're gonna make it into a log. And then I'm gonna do take my knife. When that happens, we see someone hungry will come. <laughs> will come really? Out. Yeah. I'll take a little bit and keep kind of rolling it into a log. Ursula, you're right. The consistency kind of feels like a, a, a biscuit dough. Almost. Yeah, it kind of does. Yeah. A little bit softer, but yeah. it's never going to be... <laughs> Here comes our dog. Here comes crazy. There she is. Three and a half month old nut job. <laughs> and you can go as... Um, as thin of a log as you'd like, my grandma would probably stop at this point 
and then I like them just a little bit thinner. You got about three quarters of an inch in diameter. And then I'm gonna, if you have a pot, I should have probably started with that. <laughs> <laughs> I did say it in the in the preparation. Okay. I'll have, have a, a pot. pot of water if you would turn so it on. So a pot of water. Pot, pot, pot. I know, I get it, I get it. So a pot of water with uh, what, a couple, uncover it. a couple three inches, four inches yeah, of probably. water in there. And then you want me to turn it on? Yeah, you'll... turn it on. To what? To high. High heat. Okay, boiling, boiling. And then we're going to form our little dumplings. So I normally do, they look, I'm like, I try to make it look nice. So I go at the, at an angle. On the bottom. And see how they're, like, they're super soft. The, the dough is super soft. And because there's so much other food during Thanksgiving, Make them small so people can eat all kinds of stuff. And then you take these. Do you know these things will be? You turn these on things the will rock one. on a turkey gravy. Oh, I turned on the wrong one. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> just put, I'll just put, put it over it. here. See how big of a genius I am? My genius creates gravity. It's so big. <laughs> oh. And then after this, our beets take no time e even either. So we're almost done with Thanksgiving. And my water is coming up to boil. I had it hot before. So I'm just gonna load my. Are you guys keeping up? Who's cooking? Am I too fast? One nice young lady said you're doing it wrong. There's no flour in your hair or on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on that. <laughs> okay, so now you're using like a pastry scraper cutter yeah. thing. All right. And this is almost coming to boil. Are you with me? I'm with you. All right. I'm going to go plop them in there. The wife's pretty far behind. What happens? And then grab me a wooden spoon from there, please. Grab me a wooden spoon. And what I do normally is I kind of do a swirl. So if they're sticking to the bottom, they're not anymore. And I'm just going to give them a, a minute or two to come up. And then we'll... I normally kind of watch and see if they, they come up. I turn the heat down a little bit. Because we don't want the boil to be super high to break them up. They're, they're, they're pretty delicate. We have people waiting for their potatoes to cool. Put them in the freezer. Put them in a snowbank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put them in a snowbank. Now, do you salt that water? Uh, yeah, you can salt it. I don't think I salted it, but they'll be swimming in gravy, as Mark I think started saying yeah I was yes they soak up these things will soak up nice turkey gravy really well <laughs> and this water is uh, may I request your uh, uh, assistant not okay. assistance your attention okay so this is slowly coming to a bubble and give them a little stir again Voila. <laughs> oh, how's it going? How's it going? <laughs> Make some more of those things. <laughs> I'm just going to do this one more batch and then we'll keep moving. Or should I continue with this, guys? Or should I move on to beets? Please let me know how I do. Somebody said they're waiting for the beets. She is a very loud sneezer. Yes, she scares animals. <laughs> and small children. And small children. <laughs> so my uh, kopitka are coming up to the top. And very important to turn it down to low. We don't want the water to to now break them up. So, so you want like a, just a just, just a below sim a simmer. Yes, uh, just kind of they're floating on top, hanging out uh, for just. We're going to do two minutes on the clock. Well, we, have, <laughs> we have many votes for beets coming Beats, up. Beets, okay. So I will pack up and I'll see you guys later.
And then, <laughs> and then you have the other side of the camp. America is also politically divided and divided on beets or kopitka because half of them are saying, uh, let's stay with this because they need time. <laughs> and others saying beets. Don't worry, this is going to be on the internet forever. Forever and ever. I'm sorry, I'm going to give you a little bit more time to make the kopitka because I'm going to cook these because I already have them ready. And then I have my dish. You are a dish, baby. I am a dish. See, they're floating nicely. And they're nice Ooh, and yellow. Argentina's signing in. Hello, oh, Argentina. Hi, Argentina. Gabby's rocking it. So they're starting to float. And after they float, how long you leave them in there? A couple there? minutes. Okay. And then they're also really, really good, really, 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 really good after you've cooked them. And then the next day when you can just heat them up by browning them in butter. Ooh. It's delicious. But for gravy, I would serve them like this. Yes. Because they're so they softer. Soak. Yep. So then you can like squish one with a fork. Mm. And then the gravy will move in. Mm. <laughs> My daughter's over there shaking her head She's like you're old and not funny. <laughs> not sure you're hilarious. How are we on the minutes? Twenty five seconds. All right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? If the sneeze doesn't come up. <laughs> It disappeared, but it's funny. So I'm saying if it doesn't come out correctly. If the sneeze is not as correctly as loud, it will find another way to come out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's why they have to come out. Uh, I'm pulling them. Yeah, you pull them. Inez, is, Inez is asking if we're watching the World Cup because Poland's playing in it. Um, no. We don't. Uh, we're not sport. sporty people. <laughs> we're, we're in the kitchen. <laughs> Built for comfort, not just well. I suppose watching sports is comfortable. So, if you cook these, you that if they start falling apart like this, you're cooking them too long. Uh huh. So, so you're saying, yeah, like, this like guy this over here who got a little cranky, so kind of kind of watch your pan. Okay, and just because I already have these, I'll, I'll just put them in. Watch your pants. And I'm curious. Okay, wait. Uh, I accidentally added 15 ounces of pumpkin to half the amount of potato, and just should she add more taters and and add, flour, huh, to yeah, get the right consistency? Yeah, add little, maybe one more egg and then another uh, like cup of flour and try to fold it in and see. Um, may have to add a little bit more flour, but don't don't work it as a pizza dough. Work it as a um, like a pastry that a biscuit has to come down. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah, All right, so let me just move this stuff around here. Now keep an eye on the keep your area clean. My love, do you need anything? A beverage or anything? I mean, I always need a beverage. Over there? I just shouldn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll show you this. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with dead space when when you're not talking. Well, you can tell a joke. I don't know any that are appropriate for... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the pastry board. Let's talk about the pastry board. We have the measurements for this. A lot of people ask about it. Her old, her old man uh, made it for her, Tato. And... Um, we will eventually, someday, we keep saying we're going to post the measurements on there. Thank you, my love. But we just haven't yet. Okay. To the beets. I'm using, okay. In the recipe, you will see that you roast the beets and then peel and cool them, which is fine. Excuse me. Um, but the absolute best is if you make your own pickled beets. It will make your beat experience a whole new journey <laughs> beat journey <laughs> so there's i have a recipe for my beets on the, on the website and this is what they look like these are probably a couple months old and they're not fermented beets they're 
uh, vinegar-based brine pickled. Um, they make absolute best beets. If you can't have that uh, best, next best thing is to roast your own and then shred it, which we'll do next. And then the next option is Bacik has a... <clears throat> these are called Buraczki Cvikowe Domowe shredded red beets. And these are the consistency that we need for, uh, for today's recipe. So that's easy for us to... Are you talking right now? <laughs> She was asking if our smallest doggy has eaten yet. Oh, That's all. Oh, she has it. <laughs> you can do it. You have the power of Poland. I do. Yes. And for this, you will need an apron, and that's why I'm wearing a dark shirt. <laughs> and gloves, which I I apologize, I forgot to put in the description. Well, if you don't, you're just gonna have pink uh, fingers. You're for just a gonna minute. have pink fingers. Yeah, you're not gonna. The, uh... Dorothy would like us to show the jar of beets again. Now, bring the bachik ones and this one, because uh, I don't know which ones, so we're going to put them side by yeah, each. These are the ones, the very fine shredded ones. I don't know if it'll focus live like that, but we'll see. And then they're called shredded red beets. These are pickled. And these are pickled, they're my... I and these those. are not pickled. These are not pickled. Well, they, they may have a little vinegar in them, yeah, they do. They do, okay, so they are pickled. They have uh -huh. to be... Otherwise, they lose color. Oh, that's just, right. They do, don't they? They turn, turn brown. brown and... So, to start our beet dish... Oh, my things are floating. Oh, no. We forgot about the kapit. I didn't forget. You didn't? I have to look at them. And then we're going to use the most dreaded side of the shredder. Grater is the little tiny guy. That takes your fingertips. The knuckle. The knuckle buster. Buster right here, <laughs> this guy. And if you roasted your beets uh, and peeled them, the next step is to shred them on this side of the shredder. And it just kind of destroys them. It just it? mushes them, yeah. There's probably, if you have a, a kitchen, what do you call it? A food processor? Food processor, you can. There's an attachment for that too. But why if we can just make holes in our... This will just make <laughs> holes in my gloves anyway. <laughs> Nothing like a little latex with your beats. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and these are... They, t they st taste amazing. So how many beats are we doing here, babe? Um, I'm going to do this whole jar. Me look up. The whole jar, so and jar. But if you're following the recipe, I'm not sure, Ahanya. Ah, Jackie. Wait, I have to do something with the. Somebody asked if these will stay in the board. Yes, they will. If they That's will. how you know you're cooking real good, is because everything is stained. Oh yeah, they will definitely stay in the board. I'm trying not to make it that there way. There we go. These held up. Out hot. Did you try one of these? I didn't. They were hot. I had to drop it. Mmm. Yum. I agree, yum. So I'm going to just shred one of these. Sorry. And I think I'm going to open the jar of bachik. Otherwise, I'll be here all day. You know what would be interesting in those kapitkas? Kapitki? Kapitka. Kapitka? <laughs> What's multiple of that? Kapitka. Okay. Like one pierogi kopitko. and pierogi. One kopitko. Uh huh. And dva kopitka. Okay. Anyway, if you use pumpkin pie filling in pumpkin those, pie filling. instead of this, just the pumpkin. Yeah. Right. So it's spiced and seasoned, and then you sauté them in butter and sugar. Breadcrumbs and or, cinnamon. Right. Oh, oh, you just invented a whole oh, thing. Oh. <laughs> Find that next Thanksgiving on Polish or Kitchen. You can do it, baby. Polska biały czerwone. Okay. <laughs> You're just gonna watch me struggle, huh? I'm holding the camera. My wrist hurts. Didn't you see the the video on Gdańsk? You're the one that does, I'm holding the camera. Okay, I know I'll hold the camera. 
Now this is going to be embarrassing if I can't open it. There we go. I listened to it before. I know you did. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and then you have to... I do. So to make the beets, which this dish is absolutely amazing. Sorry, I have to clean this up, otherwise I feel bad. I want to give the cabbage a stir since we're back here. See how it's doing, huh? Ooh, look how pretty. Sorry, Jane. Her, her, she was buffeting for too long. This is just slowly kind of bubbling. And that's what we want. You can put it in a crock pot too and let it sit for probably three, four hours. And it'll be perfect. Just keep an eye on the moisture. I'm going to do a pot cooking. So then, this dish is called zasmajane, which means, kind of means fried. But what it really means is that we make zasmashka. And zasmashka means roux. So we're going to do, I'm going to turn this on, butter roux. So I'm going to put, you know, probably, how much do we have? Which is different than a kangaroo. <laughs> I'm going to put some butter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Question, did you cook the kapusta in the oven? Yeah, sure. Once yeah. you mix everything together, you can pop it in the oven. I probably put it for about an hour. And that's super high temperature. Um, maybe, uh, what is it, 360 is normal. 350, 360, so I'd probably do about 300. And how much butter are you put in there? A couple so tablespoons? I think I put about a tablespoon in here right okay. now. And I think I'm going to add another half or so. I'm going to melt this butter. Don't do that. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then I have to reach behind you. Oh, sorry. Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. And then once this butter melts, and this, this takes no time. If you have your beets prepared already, turn this up a little bit. I'm going to add butter, about enough butter, enough flour to soak up the butter. So to my exact measurement, probably this much. And as you can see, it'll be, we, we want a little paste happening here. And you have the measurements in the recipe. That's why I'm not too stressed about being too exact on it. And then maybe a little bit more. There we go. I think the most, when I look back on when you're writing the book, the most thing that frustrated you is trying to figure out how to explain the measurements of everything. You're like, you just do it. <laughs> and now I have to measure it. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, was, I think it's most people's kind of frustration with not having access to recipes from our family members who are no longer available with us to ask. Um, we don't want to make dark roux. So as soon as kind of this combines okay. and starts bubbling, we are ready to go. And we're just gonna put this, these beets in here. And now how much is that jar This of beets? jar is 31 ounces. Okay. This is, I do this so I don't have to ask for a spoon. <laughs> It's also just, entertaining it to watch. It just looks so much better, yeah, on camera <laughs> when I do it. And then come closer, my love. Yes, darling. And we're just gonna mix this in, give it a little bit of salt. What do you reckon? Half a teaspoon? Yeah, I have to run to get vinegar. Oh, okay. <clears throat> How much salt do you reckon that was? Uh, a pinch. So a teaspoon. And some vinegar. Vinegar will make. Or how much vinegar? Uh, it's all in the baby. I don't remember. It's okay. all in the recipe. <laughs> you can turn over there to the page that we're. Oh no! I'm turn this I'm down. Too busy. Where's Hannah? She had to go walk to the animal. Oh. I'll give this a stir. I'll turn down the heat a little bit because I don't want this bubbling super like this much. And this needs a little bit of moisture as well. To do so, we're gonna give it, right here's my moisture. 
uh, I have cream here, either half and half in America or heavy cream will work too. Some kind of cream product. And this is going to provide us with a cream. This is about a couple tablespoons. Yep. Maybe a couple, three tablespoons, two, three tablespoons. can do a little um, squirt of lemon too if you'd like, but I normally just do vinegar. But that's how how grandma did it. And so these beets look like they're a little bit thicker shred than the ones we would do on that, but this is Let good Let me too. see if I can get a little comparison next to each. Yeah, they look, the camera doesn't show it, but yeah. yeah. I'll put this in here too. And these are pretty much done. I'm just going to give them a taste because they need to be, they need to taste specifically. And it's important how much vinegar to salt to milk or cream we do. There's also a capusta version mm. of this, right? Yeah. Cabbage version? Yep. We are there, my friend. Mm -hmm. So this is done. Mm. Off. Mm. Right, so it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, you have to be able to taste the creaminess in it. Yeah. So if you have Whipping cream that will work better. Half and half will do the job as well, but you might have to put a little bit more in there. And when you mean whipping cream, you mean not have, sweetened, not uh, sweet heavy cream. No, 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 no. Like, yeah. Well, I just don't want people like. Right. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. Like high fat content mm -hmm. cream, but not sour cream. Right. And your beets are done. Next to these. Could you use sour cream? No. No. I mean, you can. It, it won't do, it won't provide the flavor that, that sweet cream does. True statement. I mean, can you? Physically, yes, but that's not the flavor we're going for. <laughs> and that's my friend. Oh, now it's time. Where am I going? You just stay where you oh. are. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Look at this. Next to this. So, um, oh. Am I moving too fast? Yes. I can't. I Slow down. I just can't wait. <laughs> mm. nego, Jean says. I want smudge nego too. Um. Mm -hmm. This is. This is one of my. I can't even say that anymore. I'm gonna say my, one of my favorite flavors. <laughs> what about the mm. sauerkraut mushrooms? Let's plate that up. Yum. That is really good. Sauerkraut mushrooms aren't ready yet. Oh, are they gonna be ready tomorrow? But they will be ready. We can taste it a little bit. Now, how long would you really let this cook for? These I, would this, mushrooms? I would let this cook for an, about an hour. Right? And then preferably over, sit overnight and then cook yep. it again, huh? Yep. Or if you guys are cooking it today for Thanksgiving, it'll be perfect. Truth. Truth. Truth be told. I will give you a little... Yeah, taste. I want to give me a forkful, eh? Oh, I'm excited. I am too. Yeah, I'll give you... How is the cooking along going, guys? <laughs> Are you eating? I am eating. Or are they? Are you talking to me? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to them. Mm-hmm. Mm. Did you get a mm. nugget of flavor? <laughs> I win. Yeah. You're on a trip to uh, Mike's stove. All right. Mm. Mm. Sure. That's our cooking on, my friends. No, we have to figure out how we're giving away the I know. thingy. We have uh, two gi two gifts to give away. That was a, an hour of cooking, guys. And yep, hour and ten minutes. You have three dishes done. Amazing. Um, so, 
Go look in the... Can you see the comments? Uh, hold on there, folks. <laughs> I'll come kind of closer to you. Go behind the screen here. Oh, we have some lag going on. There are comments here, okay. yes, my love. So, to be... I, and this is only, I'm sorry, this is only for um, U.S. Uh, because of availability of shipping. But first person who can uh, answer this question. Oh. And I will give you a little bit of time to get to the device that you're on to type the message. So while we're waiting for that, um, I have something to say about shipping. Okay. All right, hold on. Let me... Hey, how's it going? So folks, if you do want to order a, a, a cookbook before Christmas, you're running out of time. And I don't say that to make you buy cookbooks. If you don't want to, that's fine. We just love you hanging out with us. But if you're in the United States or Canada, it's if you do economy you're out of luck there's no way there's no way so priority or global express right global express is only for united states and other other european countries but it's not not available sadly for canada which i'm very very sorry about and i wish it was but priority is priority is available in canada and priority is available in in the states uh priority will get it to you almost in the same time as Global Express. It's called Global Express for some reason, I'm not sure why. But they're saying anywhere from six to 14 day business days. So we're coming to a point where you may not get it at the time that you would like to have it. Yeah, so and if you ship economy, guys, like- If you ship economy, I like, can just forget you, you will not. Yeah, you will not. just forget you bought a book. Even though they say it's four weeks, it's never been four weeks. No, it's been, we've been like 14 weeks. So yeah, again, we don't control the shipping. The planet is screwed up right now with shipping. It's not our fault. Yeah. But we love you guys anyway. Thank you so much. All right, what's your question? Okay, so um, this is kind of going to be a segue to our next live. Our Christmas live is going to be coming up as well uh, soon. I will post dates um, soon. And first person who can type in three dishes of christmas oh three the traditional three polish traditional polish dishes judged by us judged by us well her really <laughs> um two first person will get a bunch of gift basket and the second person will get um the christmas box sent from us and if you can you see the messages? Pierogi Zurich Compote. Nope. Zurich is not a Christmas dish. Pierogi Fish Barsch. Okay, that will go. Who's that from? Uh, let's see here. Hold on. It's going so fast now. <laughs> um, Gloria Voida. Gloria. Pierogi Fish and Barsch. Please send us a message at... Um, let's do info at polishyourkitchen.com or polishyourkitchen at gmail.com would probably be easier. All right, let's see here. The next one, pierogi, borscht, mushroom, soup, and fish. Uh, we'll, we'll take that one. Ed Mullen, Ed Mullen, you get uh, the, the next prize, which is the- The gift box. The gift box. So Ed, Ed Mullen. Ed Mullen. Please email us at polishyourkitchen. No, 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 that don't. guy, Ed Mullen. <laughs> Email us at PolishyourKitchen at gmail.com and give us your mailing address and we'll get your uh, gift out pronto. Yeah. So, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope I can, you can see. I don't know. Let me point it at her because she's pretty. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you so much for your support. We really, you don't know what it means to us for you guys when you support us with just a like on a video, a comment on a video. We can and buy we do, the book, obviously. Maybe we don't answer all of the comments just because there's so many, but we really try to read them all and definitely answer if there's questions. And um, I want to thank you for being here today because it's very, very important to me that you are spreading this knowledge to your family, to your next generations, and that your Polish heritage keeps living on in your home makes me super proud and makes this whole um book and this whole blog 
worth while it's so nice to know that there's someone on the other end that is benefit benefiting from all this knowledge and that it's available to you and then you can keep going with your family and just keep spreading the love so yeah. we'll see you next time um we'll, we'll post links to uh bachik in the, the video description if you're not watching live uh the recipe links are under there you can go to posturekitchen.com and view all those recipes there's all over i think over a hundred uh cooking videos on our channel so all the food that you need to cook is available to you for free uh, so log in and we'll see you next time and we love you and thank you and do widzenia do widzenia